Hi, my name is Keith Cooper from North Light Images, and in this video I'm talking about updating Mac drivers, uh, in particular for this, the uh, Canon Pro 1100, new printer that's only just recently out, but also to do with Apple operating system updates. So uh, two things really, um, updating this MacBook Pro to 15.1, it was on 14.7. 14.7 worked perfectly well. I've used it for lots of videos I've made and testing I've made on this particular uh, printer here. So that worked. I thought, right, I'll update the driver. I updated it to the new driver. Yep, no problem, it worked. Thought then in a, and something I normally avoid, um, I never go to, you'll notice I updated it to 15.1. I have looked after Max for getting on for 30 years now. And I have a habit that we developed uh, over time of never ever updating a Mac to an operating system that ends dot zero on a working machine. It's, it, it's a good principle. It works for PC support as well. Um, if you want to install the latest updates as they come out, well, that's fine. Security updates are one thing, but actual operating system updates, be very careful. But anyway, it worked. It updated. It went to 15.1, which is what's running on this. And I thought, right, well, I'll do some more printing. I'll test it. I've got this new driver on it. Remember the driver was updated on the old system before I thought of updating this. So I thought it's there's no difference. I checked the driver version. It wasn't the AirPrint driver, which is a mistake. And I'll come back to avoiding the AirPrint driver in a moment. Wasn't the AirPrint driver. It was the proper driver, um, whatever version it is. And I thought, right, OK, we'll print. Now, I'm printing this particular image here, and I'll be doing a video specifically about this video, this image, because it covers some aspects of color management, such as choosing rendering intents when you're printing and a few other things, and also the process I went through to get it. This was taken, by the way, this picture with the uh, Brighton Star 9mm RF mount lens I tested recently, 9mm ultra wide, rectilinear, not fisheye, the right subject looks impressive. And I like the look of this tree when I took it out the other day for, for you know. Uh, but anyway, I was going to print this. So I printed it from using, uh, I got the image, I'd edited it. Remember, I've got 15.1 and the new driver on here. Printed this for using the Canon PPL software. It worked, came out just fine. Um, I was thinking, what am I going to do with rendering intents? Because rendering intents make subtle difference to prints. Now, in Canon PPL, you only have the rendering intents perceptual and relative colorimetric. If I print from Photoshop, I've also got the option of the saturation rendering intent, which sometimes works better. And I, I emphasize sometimes. Um, particularly with images like this. And remember, this is an image where I'm relying on the fact that I've made a pro custom profile for this. This is, by the way, on the Permajet's titanium uh, gloss metallic. It's a very interesting paper, which I've looked at in the past, but it gives an almost transparency feel to it. Not sure how much that'll show up on the videos here, but it, it makes for interesting pictures with the right image for that paper. But anyway, I wanted to just test this, so I thought, oh, I'll print it using Photoshop. I printed it using Photoshop, and this is the one that came out. Now, I looked at it and thought, it doesn't look quite right. The colours are less saturated. The reds are much less saturated in it. The greens look slightly off, but in general, and I'll, I'll take some pictures of these so I can try and show you the difference in a video. Remember, video is truly awful for explaining and showing subtle color differences, but it was wrong. So I checked all the driver settings. All seemed okay. Anyway, long story short, after looking at various other troubles people have had, I thought, I know what, I will delete the printer instances in the, in the preferences here and reinstall from scratch. Because I'd heard that somebody had mentioned somewhere that they'd reinstalled and it had fixed the printing system. Anyway, 
installing and I'll go I'll just show you the process I went through here because I had to make sure I didn't accidentally install the air print driver now with most printers like this I will install two instances of the driver one the air print one one the proper one um, the reason I do that is because it always reminds me to double check these things when I'm doing printer installations on Macs here now, this used years ago this used to be very easy but now it's yeah come on apple get your act together on printing but anyway installing the driver delete in the system preferences the printer that you have there so just delete it then you need to go to the driver software and you'll get stuff and it will come up and the installer downloadable installer you'll get it and it will just you know it'll pop up and go through all the steps now i grabbed some screenshots here so excuse me glancing down just to check what i've done here you install it in the default location you don't need to do anything and lo and behold it runs through the installation was successful and that is it it's installed it however it has not created a printer instance in the list of printers, i.e. the printer isn't there in your printer list. Now, I then go to the uh, system preferences and go to add a printer. Now, I look and I can see there are two Canon printers sitting on the network. Now, the, uh, the P5000 was switched off at the time, so it doesn't show up here. It shows Karen's uh, office printer and this. Okay, so we go to the add printer dialog. If you get use here other than that, and if you just do the default as many people would, the ad there goes through the process um, and it goes through setting up the 1100 series. You get a thing setting up the device and lo and behold, there is a printer. Simple enough. However, click on the arrow and look at details. And here is where I see that that particular printer that I've clicked on by just going through what seemed the obvious way of doing it, it says Canon Pro 1100 series air print. So useless. Air print is utterly useless for anything but connecting to phones and iPads. For any serious printing, it is utterly useless. Uh, if somebody comes up with a good use for air print, please do let me know. I will happily go, uh, uh, you know, explain it and go through things. Anyway, I've got the wrong driver. I don't want the air print one. What I actually want is, and I, I'll rename it to something to make sure I don't accidentally pick it like Z uh, Canon here. I want to leave it there just in case I want to experiment. But anyway, if I go back to that add printer dialog, the bit where it says select software, I now get a dialog pop up of a big long list of printers. And we can see Canon Pro 1100 series right at the top. I click on that and do an install. And now we can see something's happening because I get a pop up. Um, if you move to the, the later, if you're, if you're moving from an older Mac operating system to a newer one, you will find you get asked for a lot more allow bit of software X to connect to or do something. Um, the security aspects of this have been locked down a lot more. Um, of course, it says allow Canon IJ printer set up too to find devices on local networks. Seems reasonable enough. So allow that you don't think, oh no, can't have that. Don't allow it because then some bit of your printer setup won't work. So anyway, we allow that. Now I have two Canon printers, but checking the one that's just appeared, I can see it says driver version 29.1.0.0. That is the correct driver. 29.0.0.0 was the original driver for this. This is the new driver. So I have the new driver set up. So I've got the driver set up. And if I look in my list of printers, I've now got my printers here. I've got my 1100, which I've actually changed the name of to put 29.1.0 after it. Um, you don't need to do stuff like this, but because I experiment with lots of printers and change systems, I add things like this to the names just to make sure I don't get stuff mixed up. Same way as I always set paper types via the front here as well as here. Belt and braces maybe, but it helps save wasting things. But anyway, I've done that. So I've got my driver set up correctly. 
Um, I can check, I can go through, I can check it shows me the supply levels and all sorts of stuff like this. Um, I run, just to be up safe on the safe side, on the printer utility, I update the media information for the driver. That's because this has a custom media type or several custom media types installed that I've been experimenting with. That was with the old driver. With a new driver, I need to update things. So I need to run this up data. Um, this, this feels clunky to me. Um, it, if I have to think about this, I wonder what am I actually doing here? Do I need to do this? Now, I've got years of experience of testing things and doing stuff, and I need to stop sometimes and think, hang on, where are we? That tells to me there is a basic fundamental usability flaw in this process. Well, there's already one for the having to select stuff and not getting air print by mistake. But anyway, that's it. I run that. Uh, it runs its acquiring information from the printer, runs it. Oh, and then I get another one of those little pop-ups. This time it says, allow Canon IJ Printer Utility 2 to find devices. Well, yes, how's it gonna work otherwise? So we'll allow that. Um, it updates the drivers and everything seems okay. This one, however, wants my password. Um, so yes, it's good that all these little checks and things, it seems a bit clunky. Um, but anyway, I'm now going to try printing from uh, Photoshop. The thing to, in these drivers, when you're printing from Photoshop, you've got two choices. You've got printer manager's color, which you might use for using the black and white print mode, which is very good, which works very well. So it's a perfectly good thing. Or you might use the color one where you're going to use uh, let Photoshop manage colors. Now, if Photoshop is managing colors or any other application, Lightroom, whatever, um, when you go into the settings, look at the color handling and you will see grayed out under the color information. You've got a choice of color sync or Canon color matching. It should be color sync, but it should be grayed out. You shouldn't be able to change it. Now, that tells me that this lot seems to be working. So I can then just go through my normal print dialogues. Um, on Macs here, there are still some issues about presets and things like that. Um, you're gonna to have to look up other stuff. I'm not gonna cover that here. But in general, if you see a, a dialogue that you check and everything is fine, click OK rather than cancel. Um, now, I've heard some say that this, the, the bug that was in the printing system has been ironed out in this new system I've got here. I don't know, um, I'm just being careful with it. But anyway, I go through all the settings of that and do that, and I've got my standard print dialogue. Right, well, that all seems fine. At which point, I pr I'm using one of the newer Photoshops that's running on this. Um, I make a print, and this one, and this is one using perceptual rendering, it comes out and make sure not too many reflections. There we go. You can see when I say it's a glossy paper, but um, that is pretty much how it looked on the screen. Pretty much how I wanted the picture to look. Um, that's that one. Here is the one that didn't quite work. Now this may look better on the video. I don't know. As I said, I'll take the photos, but this looks slightly wrong to me. Now, you might think, well, that's, that's an expensive mistake to make. Now, fortunately, I am, one of the nice things about doing all this printer testing and stuff is I get loads of samples of paper and stuff and ink to test it with. So here, uh, you know, it's, it's an educational mistake rather than an expensive mistake. But I would say if you are swapping systems, updating drivers and updating systems, and this goes for, for Windows stuff as well, Print a known good test image. Now, normally, first thing I do on printers is print a particular test image. It's downloadable. I've got loads of them on the Northlight like Images website. That is what I would use, because I know that so well, I can spot something wrong. Um, here, this got the updates, got the better of me, and I thought, oh, off we go, because I'd already had a good-looking print. Now, I've got another print. I did this on a art... Uh, um, Fine art paper, cotton rag, Baraita paper, one of the Permajet ones I tested recently. Um, and that looks good as well. 
This one is a bit more fancy because of the reflection. But as I say, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll do a video actually looking at this particular picture, some of the processing I did. Relatively simple processing for it, but just makes a difference as to how it actually looks when the print comes out. So there you have it. The gist of it is the things to remember. If you are updating your system, install your printer driver from fresh. When you've done that, when you then will need to add an instance of the printer, i.e. a printer to the printer list, in doing that, make sure you don't accidentally add the air print driver. Now, I had somebody say that from, a, from another machine, I followed your instructions and it didn't work. Well, I have a simple answer for that. You got it wrong. Now, that may sound a little harsh, but I can get it wrong as well. And I can quite confidently say that if you did, if you, you know, if you actually looked at what you're doing, it would work. Uh, that's not meant as offensive, as offensive in any way. It's just merely that, you know, I've messed these things up as well. Look, I've messed up an A2 print. Well, have I messed it up or was it just because I didn't take care in doing a test image after I'd done the update? But take care on any system when you update systems, particular major system upgrades, and particularly when you upgrade or alter the printer drivers, because all sorts of subtle differences could creep in. Um, this picture is enough that the difference is subtle enough that many people would not even notice. If you put pictures at opposite ends of the room, I suspect most people wouldn't notice. Most people are more likely to notice that in one of the pictures, there is a person just in a place that I didn't want, and then the other picture they're missing. Uh, but there you go, that's where you are. Now, uh, a bit involved there. I hope it was complete enough to help people get through this. Um, anyway, it's a lovely printer. It works well, but just be careful. Uh, there you go. Thanks for watching. If you've got any other questions, please do just let me know. Bye.